CNN Motorsports live coverage of the Mountain Dew 500 from Hickory, North Carolina. The last time we were here, it rained us out back in February. Not so today. We got beautiful sunshine skies. We're about ready to go racing. Steve Grissom sat on the pole here back in February. He's still there. He's tired of waiting, ready to go now. The only other change is Ken Schrader was scheduled to drive here. Due to an earlier scheduling conflict, he's not here today. Dale Earnhardt is going to take over his car. We're just about ready to go racing. In the mic and he said it. I'm sorry. I told him to wait until I said go. Okay. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Hickory on a beautiful 80-degree Easter Saturday. Mike Joy with Neil Bonnet. Neil in this 300-lap race. These teams seem real concerned about tire wear. Mike, they can't change tires here unless they do it on the green. They won't be penalized. But if you change on the caution flag, it's going to cost you two laps. It's almost the same thing. On the green, you lose time on the caution. So tire wear is going to be a big factor today. They've lengthened this event to 300 laps in hopes that every team will have to stop for fuel. What do you think? Can you gamble? It's going to be a gamble. If these guys can go that far without fuel, they're going to be looking at the fuel cells in these race cars. 300 laps is pushing it a little more than normal. This race postponed from February. The field was set back then, but some of these drivers have whole new race cars. They practice today, and we're about to see how they fare. Here's the starting lineup for the Mountain Dew 500. As they qualified in February, Steve Grissom is on the pole in his Channel Lock Oldsmobile. Dale Earnhardt driving Ken Schrader's car on the outside pole. That's a Chevrolet. In row number two, series champ Bobby Labonte in a Chevrolet. Right alongside former champion Chuck Bound, he's in a Pontiac. The fifth starting spot for this race, earned by Ward Burton, driving a Buick. And right with him, one of the series' newest winners, Robert Presley in an Oldsmobile. Darrell Waltrip will line up in the seventh slot in his Chevrolet. And next door, Mike Wallace from Missouri in the Dick Morosa Oldsmobile. Butch Miller will go off in ninth position in the Henderson Oldsmobile, and Jack Sprague will be right there in 10th spot in an old. Further back, Joni Macek and Jimmy Spencer in row six, Tom Peck and Bobby Dotter in seven. Row eight, it's Ed Faree with the Bush North champ, Ricky Craven. Local driver, Scott Kilby and Jeff Green. Then a lot of fast cars starting out back. Look at Jimmy Hensley there, Jeff Gordon, Ernie Irvin, and further on back, drivers like Kenny Wallace and Jeff Burton toward the back. Then you've got Tracy Leslie with a broken leg, Steve Boley in the Jack Ingram car, Todd Bodine, and finally, Tommy Houston in the 30th and final provisional spot. Today, we'll be riding along with Kenny Wallace in the Dirt Devil Pontiac. There's a look at the onboard picture as Kenny tries to clear those tires, get a little heat in them, looking ahead at Jeff Gordon's Ford and Ernie Irvin's Chevrolet. Neil, we're gonna set for 300 laps. Mike, I tell you, this is a unique situation. Qualifying usually puts your fast cars up front, spread the field out, determine who's real good. This is a whole new deal. It's a different weather and all. Are the fast guys in the front and are some of the real good cars in the back? We see Jeff Gordon. He ran real fast here, but he's in the rear. He's got a lot of work ahead of him. They've got on Gordon's car uh, taped to the dash or to a piece of uh, padding near the dash. Think of Harry Gant. Yeah, they say <laughs> they said Harry always starts in the rear and goes to the front in these bush races, so they're going to try that psychology with Jeff. Now look to the left of your screen. That's the number 15 car that Ken Schrader here qualified in February. Kenny can't be here. He was previously committed to the ASA race that you'll see on TNN tomorrow. So Dale Earnhardt is in that car. We're getting ready to go green for the first of 300 laps. Steve Grissom leads them down to the green with Earnhardt alongside. And they swap a little bit of paint down in one and wind up out of two. Now into turn three and four, which is just freshly repaved. With giving the drivers a little trouble in practice, Grissom has the lead. Boy, you talk about just paved. They paved it yesterday, Mike, and it could be a problem. But with a big wreck right here coming on the fourth turn. Richard Lasseter and Ricky Craven. Craven in the DuPont finishes car. And the innkeeper Pontiac of Richard Lasseter of Little Rock, Arkansas. And at lap two, we are quickly under caution. We'll be right back from the Hickory Motor Speedway Mountain Dew 500 coverage exclusively on TNN. Today, the Speedway, we're just back under green and the single file restart lets this field sort out just a little bit. 
Grissom back at the first of the race. Dale Earnhardt was caught on the outside on restart. He's working the inside of Grissom here. Seems like his car really gets down in the corner good. Big reaction from the crowd. They either love it or hate it. Earnhardt has the lead. <laughs> Grissom didn't want to give it up without a fight, but he may lose second spot here as well as they freight train him on the inside. Well, that preferred line on the inside is really critical. There's Grissom is leading the race the last time through here. He's going to be fifth as he crosses the start finish line this lap. Robert Presley roughs him up just a little bit, and Grissom slips in line in fifth position ahead of Darrell Waltrip and Ward Burton. We just went back to green after a second lap caution flag involving Richard Lasseter and Ricky Craven. Craven reported to his crew somebody just got in and bumped him from behind. No harm done. Both cars still in the race. Here comes Labonte right in behind Earnhardt. Really seems to get up off the corner. He's got the inside in on Dale getting that in the corner. Back off. But uh, looks like the 44 car is really strong right now. Jeff Burton there up underneath Kenny Wallace. And now Kenny caught to the outside. That's the wrong place to be caught on this racetrack because it's hard to hold your line. Now remember, a lot of these fast cars are coming out of the back of the field. Burton and Wallace. Jeff Burton started 26th. And Kenny Wallace started 24th today. They work traffic. And still up front, Bobby Labonte is giving Earnhardt fit. It looks like his car's quicker right now. He's able to get in places on the racetrack. Dale can, but Dale's been able to hold it off. But Labonte's got a good, strong move to the inside now. Bobby Labonte goes to the lead, taking the Slim Jim car up front. Earnhardt in second, Steve Grissom third, and very quickly, within 10 laps, we're into traffic. Lap traffic. Ricky Freeman gets the move over. Mike, and it's not just a single car. Once they clear this car, a few car lengths ahead, there's even more traffic. So it's going to be traffic all the way around the racetrack. Chuck Bound in trouble in four. Looks like he just got into that corner, and the car would not cut. To the left, he swept way up the racetrack and lost about six spots. Yeah. And he gets a big bump from behind from Jimmy Spencer in the middle of the back straightaway. And one car spins up into the fence. Jeff Green has spun and caught it pretty well up in turn two. At lap 18, Jeff Green spinning into the fence at the second corner. And that caution flag is quite a break for some of the drivers toward the back of the pack. Jay Fogelman, Richard uh, Lassiter among them. Tommy Houston as well was in danger of going a lap down. Well, we're coming to the eighth race of the season here in the uh, rain postponed event here at Hickory. Let's look at the Haviland update. Two weeks ago, the Bush Grand National Series ran the Budweiser 250 at Bristol, Tennessee. Butch Miller started on the pole in Charlie Henderson's Food Country car. Jeff Gordon alongside. Bobby Labonte spun early, came in for tires, never got quite caught back up with the pack. Gordon led the first nine laps until Miller went to the front. But then Butch Miller developed brake line problems and turned the lead back to Gordon. Jimmy Hensley's 25 made a strong showing, coming from sixth to second spot. But on lap 116, NASCAR officials brought out the red flag for rain with Jimmy Spencer leading. After a four-hour delay, Spencer couldn't get his car out of reverse and had to retire from the event. Harry Gatt's number seven had started back in 18th spot and, as usual, climbed its way up through traffic. Todd Bodine had brought the Frank Cece car all the way to third place with was black flag when part of his exhaust came loose. Gant took the checkered flag, finishing three seconds ahead of Davey Allison. And hear how the points stack up coming to Hickory. Kenny Wallace, the leader. Jeff Gordon in second. Then Presley, Nemechek, and Grissom. Let's have another look at this one, as here is Jeff Green coming down the front straightaway, Neil. Mike, it looks like he makes a move the outside of Jeff Gordon. I don't think Jeff Gordon saw him. He was trying to move the outside of the car in front of him. And when you get out of that loose stuff right there, there's nothing you can do but just hang on. They did a good job uh, with uh, what looked like a jet dryer, a big high, high commercial blower of, of cleaning the racetrack after today's practice and also late model qualifying. Get all those marbles off there and get us a pretty clean racetrack uh, for this afternoon's feature event. We're back to green. That's Bobby Labonte up front. 
Dale Earnhardt right with him. Steve Grissom, Robert Presley, and Darrell Waltrip, the front five. Mike, I'm not so sure Steve Grissom is not the car to really watch because just a few laps ago, he got bumped all the way back to fifth place. He's worked himself around those cars back into third, so his car is capable of getting back in the front. One car spinning into the wall. You saw it in our front straightaway speed shot, and that's Jack Sprague in the Staff America car. See if he can get rolling again. We're going to stay green. Sprague gets running, and you saw him just get loose there from the speed shot, and he went around down in one. One car against the fence in four. Bobby Dotter struggling to hang on to it. Steve Bowley way up there in the marbles in turn four. Mike, I think what we're seeing is before this race started, they swept all that track off where it was paved yesterday, and it's like running marbles. If you get the least bit out of the groove, they're just sliding all over the racetrack. Steve Grissom to second spot. Robert Presley in 59. The Alliance Training Center car comes right with him, and Earnhardt drops the him. Bobby Labonte up front and chasing traffic once again. You don't get much of a break out here. And Earnhardt's in trouble. Dale Earnhardt is slowing and heading for pit road. Watch Bobby Labonte come past. As quick as he turned in, I thought it would be a, a tire. It looks like the right front might be low on the car. Glenn Jarrett is there. They've got a problem. The right front tire is low. They're having to change both right side tires. You're seeing cars all over the racetrack coming off of turn four. The racetrack is tearing up. There's grit and gravel everywhere. That's probably what stuck the tire on Earnhardt's car. We're going to see a lot of this today, guys. Turn four is a mess. He lost a lap in the process. Lost one lap, and he's running toward the tail of being two laps down. Meanwhile, Jeff Green's car is being pushed out of the race. 29 of 300 laps complete. Bobby Labonte just there ahead of Jimmy Spencer's car. Back it back then to Robert Presley's machine. Nemechek. As they continue to run our Nemechek in trouble. We'll check on his progress when we come back. Spin up in turn number four. Steve Grissom, the leader. Robert Presley, Darrell Walter, Ward Burton, and Jimmy Spencer. Bobby Labonte had slipped back to fifth position. He has since made a pit stop for damage to the right front corner of his car, and the red flag is coming out. Mike, just guessing, I would say they're going to have to stop and clean up turn four. There's so much gravel and stuff, the car just literally can't get through the corner right now. That being the case, Glenn Jarrett is on his way out to turn number four. Give you a look at uh, just what the trouble we've got down here. Some of the Bush Grand National officials are down there at the bottom of turn number three and four, and you maybe you can see here those real dark black specks. Uh, that's that you saw a second ago there. Uh, that's not the rubber that usually builds up on the outside of the track uh, when you've been running on it a while. The rubber comes off the tires, but those are little pieces and abrasions of the asphalt uh, that's up there in the fourth corner. And the, and the track is literally tearing up down there. Mike, to, and to really emphasize the point, just before this thing went on the air, they cleaned that track. There was not one speck on it. They had it perfectly clean, and right now it looks like you're running through snow you just put out a track when you go through it they've got their hands full here comes a tractor let's around. uh let's go right down to the scene glenn well you guys are exactly right the track is tearing up something awful as quick as the uh, uh you see the tractor going by there i'm going to scoop up a handful of this stuff it's uh it's pretty bad i've never seen a track tear up this quick uh if we can get maybe get a camera on this stuff this is just a few of the pebbles that you're seeing this is all through uh starting into turn three all the way through three the middle of three and four and all the way off there's only one lane on the racetrack if the camera can see you can see where these cars have, have skidded up there in the wall once they get up into that stuff there's no controlling the race car you're absolutely at the mercy of, of g forces and gravity just whenever it wants to stop it's going to stop and that's it uh this is a mess down here now that's the aggregate uh, that the pavement's composed of a binder an asphalt and oil-based binder and the aggregate these small bits of stones that, that make up asphalt paving and it apparently just neil just hasn't had enough time to cure and to set uh to where it's causing these problems up in three and four and you can see how the groove is clean down near the yellow line and there's all this bits of loose pavement up there and it, it's like trying to drive on marbles here's bobby labonte here's labonte going down in the outside of the corner He's going to down in number, turn number one. And here he comes coming up off a of two. He damaged his right front fender, and he must be right here when he got into this car. 
or else on down in here. He got in the outside, and now he's out there in no man's land. That's that slippery stuff. Leading the race, lapping Ricky Craven. There he goes. Just like it doesn't have a steering wheel. There he goes sliding up through it. And you see how slow he slowed down them. And look behind him, the tracks he made in the in the uh, rocks and stuff. It's just once you get out there, there's no control in the car. That little John Deere tractor might have <laughs> shot at this thing if they can get a number on it after a while. Now that happened to Labonte before he stove in the right uh, front tire, which happened after he lost the lead. So we're under a red flag with Steve Grissom leading, Robert Presley second, Darrell Waltrip third, and Ward Burton fourth with just 35 laps completed. Despite today's troubles, this track has a rich history of NASCAR Winston Cup racing. Before he was King Richard, well, the blue car, that's Richard Petty battling along with Curtis Turner in 41 and Elmo Langley in 64 here in 1966. We'll be right back. Well, a sad note to report, Tommy Houston's father, Clyde, passed away last night up here in Hickory. Uh, Tommy, a native here of town, I had to take time out from family preparations to come here and run the race. Uh, we'll attend the wake tonight and the funeral tomorrow, and our condolences to the entire Houston family. Here these guys are right now, Mike, taking advantage. They, they just lifted the rule, and as soon as we announce it, the guys are taking advantage of it. Put some new tires on. You're probably going to see a lot of these guys go with new rubber on these cars. And I think a couple of them just got caught, Neil. Uh, Jeff Burton and Jack Sprague. Made pit stops, did not beat the pace car to the end of pit road, may have gone a lap down. The, the cars, I tell you what's going to be a tough road the whole right here is the cars that are lapped down on a short track like this go to the outside. Earnhardt was a lap down while ago. He's pulled outside of Grissom, but that outside lane has been so treacherous. You see the 15 car outside of Grissom, it's going to be hard to go out there. Tracy Leslie on pit road as we take the green for the restart. I believe that Tracy's still in the car. We'll, we'll double check on that with Glenn in a bit. We're back under green. Grissom is the leader. Robert Presley is second. Darrell Waltrip now up to third. And one car, Jim Bounds, spinning up in turn one. No caution. Trouble in four. And three, Ernie Irvin. And here comes the pack. You know, it's, it's going to be one of those days. Mike, they're spinning on each end of the racetrack at the same time. But every time we have a caution, it's in several different places. Uh, Man, I tell you what, it won't take very much of this for these officials have to decide to do something. Ed Faree spun his car at turn number four. Ernie Irvin could not avoid him. Took the rear bumper cover almost off Faree's car. That's just a piece of uh, soft plastic, so no real damage there. I'll have to come in and pull that off. Faree from Saxonburg, Pennsylvania. Hopeful of a strong run here today. Caution is out. It's fourth caution in 40 laps. Mike, that, you know, up in turn three, we just had that trouble. That might not even be track related. On a restart like that, they're really stacked up and could have been something else. So Grissom leading, Presley in second, Waltrip now third. And while we're under caution, we'll take this break from Hickory Motor Speedway. It's become the bump and stumble 500. We're getting this one in about 10 to 15 laps at a time. Oldsmobile safety car is in. Here comes Steve Grissom to lead them around, and Tommy Houston try to get his lap back. Not going to do it as Grissom hauls them off into turn number one, and everybody just kind of tiptoes down through there just a bit. That's Dale Earnhardt caught up on the high side, and he's going to backpedal a bit. Field gets into three. Presley coming hard underneath Houston. And we're clean to complete lap 46. That's an accomplishment in itself, Mike. And here we go. Er uh, there's a uh, Walter coming by. Press him out front, and he's got a good lead. And Darrell Walter just moved into second place. There's Darrell, he just got past the 59 car. He's hammering him, trying to get back around him now. Presley, who won at Darlington. Coming hard in the 59, but look at the lead that Grissom is building up. A little further back, in trouble again. Ed Faree is up there at turn four. Caution. Can I guess which corner? <laughs> Calamity corner. Turn three. Here we go again. You see Dale Earnhardt. He's in the 15 car today that Ken Schrader qualified for this race. And he's drifted a bit back in the pack. So a lap 49. We have the fifth caution of the day. And an Ed Faree spinning up between three and four. There's Earnhardt. That Western Steer Mom and Pops car of Kenny Schrader. We saw Earnhardt try it. We saw Tommy Houston try it. The 
lap cars have to go the outside on this racetrack, and boy, it's going to be tough for anybody to get a lap back into the outside lane. But when Tommy Houston, he's been track champion, won several races racetrack, he couldn't work outside. Earnhardt couldn't get it done out there, so it's going to be tough to get those laps back. Going to go green in one lap here. Jeff Burton's going to get out there in that outside. He's the latest guy. He gets the opportunity or whatever it is to try to get a lap back in that outside lane, and it's not been a whole lot of fun trying to do that. We get a word from Glenn Jarrett on the crew's reactions to, to what's going on down here. Well, the crews are not real happy about all this, as are the drivers. I'm standing beside a Ricky Craven. Ricky, what's wrong with your car? Well, it's not a good day for the DuPont Chevrolet. We have an engine problem. We're just not sure where it is, so they're doing it. Back under green. Engine trouble on Ricky Craven's car. Steve Grissom with now Darrell Waltrip in hot pursuit. No lap cars to separate them. And down in three, four. Things get close again as Tommy Houston way up high. Boy, anybody gets in three, four hard gets up high. The one groove that works is way down on the bottom. Right where Steve Grissom and Darrell Waltrip are. Mike, I think somebody starts really working is Darrell Waltrip. Now, he's sitting there right around the inside of the racetrack. He's just sitting there by this time. He's one of the best at this. And you see him now come up and put a little bit of heat on Grissom. Watch his car right in the very bottom. Grissom might be three or four foot out, but Darrell's right on the line. He's going to be in good shape. Back behind that bunch. Look at the jostling going on here. Robert Presley just trying to root the rear bumper up from under Jeff Burton's car. Now, Burton in the eight car is a lap down. They made a pit stop under caution. They did not beat the pace car to the end of pit road, so he's a lap down. Mike, here's where the tempers really play. You know, here we are inside of Kenny Wallace's car. He's looking to the outside. Nobody's been able to do that. Here we are sitting, but he got right back down on the inside as quick as he could. What's happening is some of these cars are faster than the guys in front of them, but they're protecting that inside lane, even if they have to go exceptionally slow. That's what's causing a lot of this bumping. That's back in 19th position where Kenny Wallace is. And Ernie Irvin's had enough. He's going to pull his Kodak car behind the wall. He was involved in one of those skirmishes with Ed Faree, and it looks as if Urban's car may be overheating as they go under the hood. Kenny Wallace, I said 19th. He was 19th in line. He's in 15th position in this race. That's where you get in a problem. Here's a car. He's probably a lot quicker than some of those other cars, but he just can't get around them because you see a lot of fast cars move the outside on some racetracks. You just can't do it here today. There's a look at Ernie Urban's car. Trouble under the hood for the Kodak machine. Right there at turn four. Must be something under the motor. In the motor, they just looked at it and they're going to let it set a while. I don't. Ernie might have had all the slides he wants for the day. That's possible. Ward Burton slides way up the racetrack. It, you see somebody go, and it, it's almost like they've got a tire going down. But it's not the tire, it's the track that's going down. Yes, yeah, one of the few races you'll ever see we're going to wear the track out instead of the tires today. Ricky Craven's back in the race. Jimmy Spencer lapping past him there. And Jeff Gordon's in trouble. A lot of smoke from the baby Ruth car. Rear end, Neil? Yeah, it looks like it's coming out of the rear of the car, still under power. Looks like he's putting a lot of grease down. It's going to be hard to tell if it's any slicker or not, but looks like he might be putting a little bit of oil down on the edge of the track off the track down in turn two down to the inside and will not be able to limp that car around back to pit road caution is out gordon's car is parked in turn two right at the bottom of the racetrack so they'll have to put the caution out there's gordon's car in a precarious spot should anybody spin about a turn number two well you've heard of the skins game in golf how about the Finns game? Right after today's Mountain Dew 500, stay tuned for all the excitement when pro anglers Hank Parker, Roland Martin, Gary Klein, and Jimmy Houston compete in the $70,000 BP Finns game 92. That's today, right after this race. Seven laps complete here at Hickory. Here's how they're running. Steve Grissom, Darrell Waltrip, Robert Presley, Jimmy Spencer, and Butch Miller, the front five. Then Chuck Bound, Tom Peck, Jimmy Hensley, Bobby Dodder, and Mike Wallace. There's a tire off Ernie Irvin's car, uh, the Kodak car, which has now been pulled and parked behind the wall. And once again, the field is coming this time around to the front straightaway. 
and to the red flag. They're going to have to work on turn three and four again, Mike. It's, uh, I'm not so sure we ran about as many laps this time as we did before, and there's not quite as much debris as it was the first time. I'm not going to say it's going to get much better, but it didn't tear up quite as bad this time. So the red flag out again this time at lap 66. The first one was at lap 35. So you're right, Neil, just 30, 35 laps. In between, uh, we've been able to get some green flag racing in. Um, let's have a look at what happened at Jeff Gordon's car. We speculated rear end, and uh, that was not quite correct. Mike here is he's coming up off the second turn down the back straightaway. He's going down the back straightaway. He's fixing to enter the corner, and watch the back end of the car kick out as he goes down in the corner. He's driving down on the inside right now. And then the tire blows. See the car jump right there. He ran over some of that debris or something. It blew a rear tire. The car lifted off the ground, and that's the right rear tire smoking real bad. And he just had to really slow down and almost got hit. But it's the, the right tier tire is all the way down on the rear. Did a nice job of controlling that car. Yep. He's done for the day with that car. But Mike, that, those rocks, these are these tires are two ply tires, and they come brand spanking new slicks with just five thirty seconds of rubber on them which is about a third what a street tire has on them. And they just cannot run with those rocks and pebbles because it'll go straight through it in just one. He turned down the corner, just lost the tire immediately. Now here's the sweeper out working turns three and four again. I have the sweeper in the 18th position one lap down. I think he lost a lap there in the pits. But otherwise, uh, he's got a good shot at this thing today. Yeah, but he's just making half laps. You're just counting him at the start-finish line. Well, he goes past the score, Stan, so uh, they count. <laughs> Oh, he could be the biggest payday for a John Deere tractor I've seen. <laughs> What's that, Alice Chalmers? Whatever that is. Yeah, it's, get the uh, name right here. It's getting some airtime today. Especially, you like that spoiler on the roof? I'll tell you what, though. Uh, it, I started to say he wasn't going to go as far as he did before, but he's going to come back. He's going to sweep it in the opposite direction this time. He's changing the rotation. Maybe that's for good luck. Okay. Well, the folks out here at uh, Hickory enjoying Chamber of Commerce weather. Temperature in the low 80s. Just a few scattered clouds in the sky. Going to be some sunburns tomorrow uh, that they can wear along with their Easter best. I remind you, race day tomorrow live, 11.30 a.m. Eastern time with all the news on what's going on in racing this weekend. And, of course, follow-up later on Sunday evening, this week, and every week here on TNN. We'll be right back. that overheating problem is on Robert's car. Get down there in a well, moment. There, Glenn. Yeah, I'm ready. I'm sorry, Mike. Uh, I talked to Eddie Pearson, crew chief Briggs, up on the truck right now talking to Robert. Robert says that the problem uh, seems to intensify as the car sits on the racetrack, and Neil can identify with this. The car sitting there after it's been running like that, it tends to get hot as it's sitting there. It just got hotter and hotter and hotter to push the water out of the car. So he says once they get running again, he thinks the problem's going to be okay. The temperature is a little hotter than he would like, but he says once they get to running again, they don't think it's going to be a, a, a problem that's going to put them out of the race. Also, I think that uh, Steve Bird has signaled me here next door that uh, Kenny Wallace is going to have to come in and make a stop, so we'll keep you updated on that. We'll go back to you for that. Folks, it's like uh, when you take a stove off the oven. Uh, that pan is still hot, and it's still going to boil the water for a little bit. That's trouble when you shut one of these engines down, and it's still hot. Yeah, Mike, and the, the fans on these cars, the that pulls the air in there on the V8s, they run a fan. A lot of these V6s use a little bitty small fan on them, and they rely on speed to force the air through the radiator, not necessarily pulling like a fan in a passenger car. And when they're not running, they're just not circulating enough air over that uh, radiator to cool her down. One lap, we'll be back to racing. 69 laps on the board. Kenny Wallace stays on the racetrack as we anticipate a green next time by. Ricky Craven made a pit stop. Uh, report he's on five cylinders with that DuPont car. Pace car coming. Jeff Burton will be trying to get a lap back from Steve Grissom. At lap 70, we go back to green. Clean restart. And down in one, that inside groove just takes right off. And now Presley gets worked up to the high groove. Earnhardt slipped underneath him. Nice move. The Arnold's trying to get that lap back, and he saw he couldn't do it on the outside, so he's going to try the inside lane right now. Give Robert Presley a call. He just saved that car. It about got away from him, and he rode it out. He drops back out of the top four spots, though. Back to fifth or sixth position. Chris is the leader. Walter been second. Earnhardt up to third. Jimmy Spencer fourth. Jack Sprague. And Robert Presley, I believe, 
break may be a lap down. So that'll move, put Presley back and forth. Tracy Leslie is on to throw. Right side tires on the Detroit gasket car. There's Earnhardt going on the inside of Waldrop. He's needing a Waldrop and the leader would like to just pace themselves. And here's a guy, Earnhardt's a lap down. He's having to run his car hard to get that lap back and he's moving him out of the way. Like enough of this, let's go race him. <laughs> so he's up there in the hunt, but you're right, he's not on the leaderboard. He's a lap back. It is Grissom the leader, Waltrip second, Jimmy Spencer third, and Robert Presley fourth. And they each have a lap car separating them one from the other. I don't know that I've ever seen a race, Mike, where everybody protects the inside line as much as they do here. Even at Martinsville. That's right. Not so much. The straightaways here are so short, Neil, if you try to run somebody up off of turn number two, you don't hardly have room to get alongside them to get down into three underneath them, do you? No, and that's what causes the bumping in the corner. A guy coming up on him and say, hey, I got a foot on him, I've got him. The guy leading doesn't even know it. <laughs> Here's Earnhardt putting the, putting the heat on the Grissom. Grissom would like, right now, he's in a leading the race, and he'd like to be pacing himself with a big lead, but Earnhardt's trying to get that lap back, and he's going to have to make up his mind. Does he let Earnhardt go, or does he battle him off to keep him a lap down? Well, there's one driver you don't want to give back a lap to. It's Earnhardt. He might not have that option. He might try to take it back. Everybody working the bottom of the racetrack now. Single file, lap 78 on the board. Earnhardt's getting the left side wheels off in the dirt, trying to get up under Grissom to get that lap back. And there he is up under. That puts him back in the lead lap, but he's on almost a lap down, but he did get the lap back. Earnhardt's in 20th position. Back at third, a battle. Just behind that group of leaders, Jimmy Spencer tried to take a spot from Darrell Walter. Didn't have any luck. Mike, we'll see cars pull up beside each other in the straightaway. When they get to the corner, they're turning left, no matter who's there on that inside area. Here's Jeff Burton come up right with Steve Grissom. He wants his lap back as well. And then there's Walter, but here comes Spencer right on the bottom, underneath the yellow line, going for second spot. Mike, they already see the outside's unusual. They're trying the dirt part of the racetrack on the inside and getting a pretty good bike there. I don't know if Darrell let him go, but if he did, it might not have been a bad idea. Jimmy Spencer running hard. That Paramount Motors Buick. Jim Bound has spun at turn one. That'll bring out the caution, lap 82. And trouble up in turn three. Jack Sprague was trying to get a lap back from Steve Grissom as they came around to the line, and two cars just wouldn't fit into that low groove at the same time. No, David Green got his lap back, and 59 cars also tried to get in there. Sprague, I mean, and he tried to get in, and they got tangled up and turned them around. Grissom continues without incident, falls in line behind the pace car now. We say without this, Mike, I'm not sure. He really took a lick on that right front. You know, as strong as he was running, we'll have to see if that hurts him later on. But he took a pretty good shot on the right front as he turned down on him. Let's look at that car as it comes around. Steve Grissom, the channel lock car, the race leader. There's Jimmy Spencer right with him. And doesn't look to be much damage, not just, apparent on the right front of that car. Just rubbed the white walls off, so. Yeah, <laughs> let's check with Glenn Jarrett. Well, guys, normally when there's a, a car crashing or something like that, you don't see crews reacting too much. But that time, when Jim Bounce spun down there, Dale Earnhardt's crew went wild because if you remember, he had just gotten that lap back. He's at the tail end of the lead lap now. He's got the leader in the, in the same straightaway with him. He's going to be trouble before this day's over. That was a great break for Earnhardt and for Jeff Burton, both of whom got their laps back. It was a tough break for Jack Sprague. He did not. Pace car is in. Lap 85, or 84 rather, we're back to green, and they're three wide out of turn number four. Just behind the leader. Well, this could be a stack of up as Tommy Houston backs through the field. Grissom leading. Here comes Spencer in hot pursuit. Then Waldron. We got a car going completely up in the air. <laughs> Over turn four where they got hung up right behind the lead pack right here. And there's Sprague coming up ahead of Walter. He's working hard to get his lap back, but these two guys in front are going to be tough. Grissom and the six-tire machine of Jimmy Spencer, the 77 car. Well, it took three laps, but now the field single file once again, and all these fans can stop holding their breath for Mike, a minute. One lap ago, I saw the entire bottom of Mike Wallace's car. He went up over the top of another one, and they're so used to it, they just keep racing now. <laughs> 
And Jay Fogelman out of Durham has made a pit stop at the Fun Stuff Pontiac. He goes back into the race. Spencer going to try it. And there's Mike Wallace's car with uh, Ward Burton applying a little customizing. That was the bumper cover you saw flying off. And in turn two, Kenny Wallace is stacked up yellow. Turn four, Tommy Houston spins. Steve, we don't have enough cameras to cover this racetrack. It's only three-eighths of a mile, and there's no way we can cover everything that's going on with one camera at a time. They're spinning at both ends at I the same believe. time. Boy, I tell you, it's it's something. You know, you, like I say, we've got a lot of places you will miss a little bit with a car. The track's so bad right now, you can't tell who's got a good car. Well, we'll take a minute and sort it out here. 90 laps complete. We are under the eight caution of the day already. We'll be back in a minute millisecond here at Hickory. Look at the underneath the front bumper of Todd Bodine's car. Remember when the rear bumper cover flew off of Mike Wallace's car? Guess where it went. Yeah. Uh, he and Ward Burton were battling along and Ward kind of helped that cover along and off. Well, it's kind of cosmetic. Didn't much need it anyway. Off it went. And guess who came along well, the lap later and scooped it up. It's not off yet, but he's going to lose it coming up the back straightaway here. Yep. He went ahead and clipped it the rest way. Did him a favor. He chopped there the rest way off. And bump right underneath the front of Todd Bodine's car. So they waved the green. Todd came to a stop under the back stretch, and now he's stopped in the pits where Glenn Jarrett's there. Well, guys, the final exclamation point to that thing is that bumper wedged up against the oil pump, locked the belt up. So that his oil pump didn't pump any oil and locked the engine up the bottom and put it out of the way. Well, I suppose inquiring minds want to know the record for caution flags in the Bush Grand National Series last year's race at South Boston, 19. We've had nine already today, and we're coming up on one third distance. Could be in jeopardy today. Could be any run. The wrong time. Steve Grissom getting pressure from Jack Sprague, who wants his lap back. In the Staff America Old, Jimmy Spencer dirt tracking it out of four. In second place, watching Grissom scoot away. Jack Sprague might really try something. He tried it a while ago. Here he's on the inside of him. They got together coming to the caution a while ago. This time he got under him, and he temporarily has that lap back. If he can hold it, we'll have to see. You know, Grissom may have, may have made a smart move there. Sprague gets underneath him while Grissom's still got enough room to get back in line before Spencer gets up underneath him. Yeah, that's kind of go from offense to defense in a hurry. Just quit worrying about that guy and try to get you protected. Turn one. Caution 10. That's Richard Lassiter. And is that Kenny Wallace? It is. And company. Kenny gets a lap down as a result. Caution 10. Lap 101. We're one-third distance. At turn one, Lassiter, who was also involved in the first caution of the day, tangles with Kenny Wallace. Sprague, just 48, just got his lap back. He had just cleared Grissom, so that, that battle was well worth it. Here comes uh, Kenny Wallace coming the left front tire blown out, sparks flying all off the bottom of the race, of the race car. Tear the exhaust system off of it, not careful with that tire down like that. And the pits are still closed, as they are in the first lap of any caution period, so Kenny will have to come around again. Last year's series runner-up. That could be. That real big spark you see that almost looks like a flame is probably the sway bar. The front sway bar on the car has little arms under it that stick under the A-frame, and it's probably riding on the uh, sway bar right now. Well, we'll catch up on pit stops under this caution in a moment as they hook up Richard Lassiter's innkeeper, Pontiac, to the wrecker. We'll be back to Hickory after these messages. Today's coverage of the Mountain Dew 500 is being brought to you by New Ram UV99. Protect your car from the sun's damaging ultraviolet rays, the sunblock for your car. Well, this is Jeff Bisley. He's the crew chief on the uh, slippery machine number 63 driven by Chuck Bound today. Why is nobody pitting? Well, <laughs> right now, new tires is not doing anybody any good, but they can't pass anybody. I mean, the only way you can pass them is knock them out of the way or jump over them and I wouldn't pit right now for $5,000 because you just can't pass nobody, you know. But uh, we can just keep all the fenders straight on an Escafé and SC Pontiac. We'll be, we'll be in good shape. And I want to say hello to my wife, Debbie, and my daughter, Emily. They're in New Hampshire for Easter. Hello. We're going to try to finish this thing. Okay, guys, they don't want to give up track position. That's why nobody's coming into pits unless they absolutely have to. Well, finishing this thing is going to be an accomplishment the way we're going today. Usually we count how many laps we're into this race. Let's do, uh, we're, we're 10 caution flags into this race. Lap 107. Let's have another look from Kenny Wallace's perspective. Here he is going down in the corner. They get his car wiggling around from him. He probably has to lift a little right here. 
coming up off the corner. Looks like the car is coming up off there pretty good. Starting down in corner. Looks like he might either got a tap in the rear. He got down into the five car, but hmm, there comes the looks like the 20 car on the inside. And after that, it's kind of history, folks. As Kenny Wallace saw it. Good thing we don't have in-car audio. Yeah, it's a good thing we don't have in-pits audio. I, that, he was very <laughs> refrained when he mentioned what was going on in the racetrack a while ago. Let's take you down through cars that are on the lead lap. Steve Grissom is the leader. Jimmy Spencer runs in second. Daryl Waltrip is the third place car. Chuck Bown is fourth. They're posting Jimmy Hensley as the fifth place car. And Jimmy has come from 19th starting spot today. Jimmy would be fourth. Robert Presley is fifth. Dale Earnhardt back on the lead lap now shown as being uh, up there with that pack as you see the second five of the top ten. Dodder Miller, Tom Peck, Ward Burton, and then Earnhardt. Riding with Kenny Wallace. Run a few caution laps here and get ready for the restart. Well, I tell you, Mike, you know, when they're having to protect us inside so much, it's surprising to me they aren't having braking trouble. We're seeing everybody just dive down in the corner and slam the brakes on, stop on the inside. You, you can't afford to go into the corner with any speed and let the car drift out because someone's under you. So they have to go in and just stand on the brakes and stop it. And it's no different than an interstate. When they slam those brakes on, it's chain reaction. And boy, they're stacking them up in the middle of the corner. One lap to go, we'll be racing. Jeff Gordon's out of the race. Todd Bodine behind the wall. Ernie Irvin is out. Jeff Green. Let's try as you approach this, Mike. You watch three and four. I'll watch one and two because <laughs> we're just seeing half the cautions. Yeah, with the folks at home, we got to watch it all at once. Uh, let's add Scott Kilby to that list of cars that are out of the race. You know, local driver in the 23 car. And let's listen to Kenny Wallace. He goes up to the gears on the restart. Dropped all the way to the back. Well, he was in a pretty bad wreck. I'm sure he's going to take a lap or two to fill it out and see if that thing's still under it like it needs to be. Running back behind brother Mike at the tail end of the field. Let's take it back up front where Steve Grissom hauls him off turn number four and Jimmy Spencer wants the lead. And when Jimmy Spencer wants the lead, that's a bad thing to have in your mirror. Trouble in one at three. He made the pass coming through three and four, coming back to the line. And ring down, caution flag 11 at lap 113. Ed Faree at turn one. That's the third flag of the day for Ed. Remember Rockingham where he dodged every every wreck, every bullet right up to the last one of the day? Mike, it seemed like every time we looked up, he was in the middle of it, would miss it. And today he hasn't uh, missed a one of them, I don't think. Some days it happens like that. Folks, don't think it's easy. <laughs> the, the surface that we're dealing with here and, and these fellas trying to run under competitive conditions, don't think keeping that car under you and pointed in a straight line is easy. Mike, I just took a look as the leaders went by from the start and finish line from first to last place. I don't see a car out there that has a grill left in it or fenders that aren't beat all to pieces. <laughs> They're all pretty well used up, and we're just a third of the way into this. 114 laps. We should go back to green here in a lap or two. Uh, Kenny Wallace has moved past a couple of cars. Still well toward the back carrying our uh, onboard camera. Here's Dale Earnhardt coming out of pit road, and as Neil said, look at the grill in that car. A bit of scrape marks on the side. Glenn Jarrett talked to him earlier and uh, asked him about his role here as fill-in driver this weekend at Hickory. I'm Kenny Schrader today. Kenny Schrader today. <laughs> yeah, he's a car owner. He's in Nashville, so we're going to drive today. But, uh, you know, it, it sort of worked out. Uh, Mom and Pops and uh, Western Steer really got uh, excited about being able to sponsor their car and us run up here. So Kenny asked me to drive it. So why not? We weren't doing anything today. Just a nice way to spend Easter Saturday. By the way, uh, that race that Kenny is in Nashville for, you'll see live tomorrow here on TNN. One to go. We'll go back to racing. Earnhardt at the back of the pack there after that stop. He is on the lead lap. We just heard some people say that they didn't want to give up track position. Earnhardt is the type of guy that he could make some track position, so he's willing <laughs> to go back to the rear and put some tires on that thing and see if he can come back to the front. Now, Kenny Wallace comes up the outside as a lapped car. Or no, I believe he's going to stay right at the back of the pack there. Kenny must not feel that comfortable with that car because on both of these restarts he's kind of laid back and waited for him to get out of the way. As happens again. And 
We're back to green. Jimmy Spencer takes off with the lead. He is the third driver to lead today. And Kenny Wallace goes up in smoke in turn two. Gonna coast it down the back straightaway and head for pit lane. Shut it off. The question is there any oil on the inside in one? He blew up right in the only place there's a groove, but the leader just went through that particular area and didn't have a problem, so it must not have messed the track up any worse. I'm mistaken. He is still running, but the smoke looks like coming out that left side header button. Must have burned the piston or something. They'll do it sometimes on the caution when, when they get hot like that. We stay green. Chuck Bowne takes a spot from Darrell Waltrip as you watch uh, Jimmy Spencer, Steve Grissom. There's Bowne and Waltrip battling behind Jimmy Hensley. Ed Marie has made a stop. And Bowne beginning to scoot away from Darrell now. Trouble in two, Jim Bowne. A 98 car. Caution. Lap 120. Caution 12. And County. <laughs> we're, there's no doubt we're going for the record. Everybody's racing back to the caution flag. Usually in this type of racing, when the caution comes out, everybody kind of slows down, holds their hands up, and they race back the flag under control. Positions is so critical, they're fighting their way back around to the caution flag now. They are under the hood on Kenny Wallace's car. Glenn, what's up? Right now, the hood's up. That's all I can tell you. I hate to be short, but uh, they have found the problem. There seems to be a, an oil leak. They've got the oil breather off. They're pouring water on it, cool the radiator off, but they seem to have sprung some kind of oil leak. Saw a lot of blue smoke out of the car, and that usually signifies that there's oil getting out somewhere that it shouldn't. Steve Bird has it under control. He knows exactly where it is. I'm not going to get in his way, but they can get <laughs> it back out on the racetrack. The car's pretty well beat up, though. The front end is knocked out of line. Kenny Wallace. On pit road, one lap will go green. Jimmy Spencer is the leader. Tommy Houston will be up there trying to get his lap back. Steve Grissom is second. Jack Sprague is a lap down. Jimmy Hensley is the third place car. Chuck Bowne is fourth. Darrell Waltrip is fifth. Unofficially, Butch Miller uh, in the sixth spot. Bobby Dodders right up there as well. Green flag, and here comes Houston. He's going to get that lap. Yep, Spencer didn't get a good start on it. Looked like he missed a gear on the restart. And Tommy Houston got around him going down in the first turn. Jim Bound is trying to separate the two leaders. Grissom won't let him have it. The Bound stuck to the outside. Steve Grissom in second. Then two lap cars before the third place machine of Jimmy Hensley. Trouble. Tom Peck gets it loose. Got batted around. No, he gets going again. We'll stay green. No, we won't. Jim Bound, turn three. That's Jim up near the wall. And number 13. You know, I've been fishing when you catch two at a time. A lot of times, two people in a boat. But this is the first time I've been racing, and there's a caution in each corner every time. 13th uh, yellow flag of the day. I want to remind all you fans of a Race for Life benefit being held at the Poco Rhythm Ranch in Morganton, North Carolina, on Saturday, May 9th. It'll benefit Danny and Leon Crump, two local youngsters, stricken with adrenoleukodystrophy. Winston Cup stars Dale Jarrett, Jimmy Spencer, Morgan Shepard will be there, along with Hall of Famers Ned Jarrett, Junior Johnson, and Banjo Matthews. A big day of fun with racing stars, souvenirs, entertainment, and all proceeds to go to cover medical expenses for these two boys. It's Saturday, May 9th, and that's uh, up at the Poco Rhythm Ranch in Morganton, North Carolina. Hope you'll attend that one if you're in the Carolinas that day. Piece of spoiler off somebody's car. Where could that possibly have come from off of these cars? Well, it's up in turn two. And Earnhardt's on pit road. He, the last time Andy got left side tires, he was about a third or fourth from the rear on this thing, so he's going to put right sides on it, and uh, he's got to come from the rear. He might as well have some new tires on it. I think Schroeder's paying a tire bill. He told me today he was going to burn up <laughs> as much tires and bend up as many fenders as he could while it was blown to Schroeder. Doing a job of it, isn't he? <laughs> I doubt seriously he loaned the car to Earnhardt and expected it back without any scratches. One to go. We'll be racing. Daryl Waltrip in for a stop. He'll get right side on the Western Auto Car, and they're trying to push start Kenny Wallace. Not much success here. Yeah, the, the smoke that's coming out, it's not wanting the crank. I think it's partially blown up uh, or either fill the pipes up with oil because every time it turns over, even when they're pushing it, it puffs out the tailpipes. 
tough day for the Martinsville race winner and the point leader. On the other restart, Spencer couldn't get going. Let's see if he's got a transmission trouble. Yes, he can't get going on this restart either. He must have a problem with the transmission because on both of the last restarts, he lost positioning on the starts. Steve Grissom could have gone to the outside but didn't. Here comes Hensley under Grissom at turn three, and Jimmy eases out of the throttle there. Yeah, once you get that nose in there, very few people are lifting out of the throttle today. They're just taking it away from him, but he did lift as they went in the corner. Now, picking through traffic, Kenny Wallace going again. That's Kenny at the bottom of your screen, lifting around. Jack Sprague is the front car in line. He's gotten his lap back. Boy, Kenny Wallace was coming in real slow, and they all stacked up behind him. No problem, though. Kenny's back in the pits. Here's Hensley again, back straight away. Made the pass this time. He completely cleared him. Jimmy Hensley ahead of Steve Grissom at the first blue car on your screen. And now Chuck Bowne is underneath Steve Grissom. Looks like the handle's just completely gone away on Steve's car. Hensley for the lead, back straight away. Jimmy Hensley who moves on to drive Cale Yarborough's car on the Winston Cup circuit. Him and one of Don Beverly's cars, a great ride here today. Hard to believe that team has soldiered on for so long, unsponsored, and yet has performed so well. Yeah, just week in, and they're not a flash in the pan team. No. Every week they're in contention to win races, and it's amazing they haven't got a sponsor that far yet. Well, they've had some one-race sponsorship deals, but just nothing to come together for the full season. Mike, that car's equipped with a Hoosier tires, and Bob Newton is notorious for dirt track tires. Maybe they got something on Hensley's car that's doing it now. A both he and Butch Miller running well here today, both on Hoosiers. Jack Sprague just in front of Hensley, trying to stay on the lead lap. Spencer is second. Bobby Dotter tried to move there, didn't work on Grissom. And Tommy Houston backing up a bit. There's your leader, Jimmy Hensley, in the Oldsmobile. That's the biggest and biggest lead we've seen all day long. It is. Report that Steve Grissom may have a tire going down as he continues to drop back. Bobby Dodder's gone past him. The Dodder is on the leaderboard now, fourth place. Hensley car really seems to be working. You know, we see a lot of cars slip and sliding up off the corner. Hensley's car's working up off the corner. There's Grissom falling back, and he's really, he's either hung out on the outside and can't get back, or he has a tire problem because he's just falling all the way to the rear. Now look at that 10 car. Steve Boley from Oxford, Iowa there, just going past Grissom. He's doing a good job today in that Jack Ingram car. Yeah, he's driven a lot of dirt tracks, and I'm <laughs> sure that experience is paying off today. I'll bet it has. Oh, Grissom's really fighting it out. He's going to have, he can't get to the inside, never mind to get to pit road. Mike, in a situation like this, you usually say, they'll tell you, just ride it out and see if you get a caution. And usually you'll just fight it, fight it, fight it, and the minute you get lapped, you'll see the guy come in. But he's sitting there hoping to get a caution and see if they can repair the car, do some work on it. If not, if he gets lapped, they'll do something different. Joe Nemechek trying to work underneath Grissom here. Tom Peck in the 19 car. And Nemechek just can't quite get it in there. Walter right there. Remember, Daryl changed tires and is coming up from the back. Grissom's car, even though he's holding these guys off right here, he's falling fall way back from the leaders. There he is on the inside. Nemechek down on the inside of him. And there, Nemechek cranked the car down under him, tried to get under him. You saw his car break completely loose. He couldn't quite pull it off. And Darrell is coming in a hurry with fresh right side tires. Yep. He pitted on that last caution. And he's got the car under control. And that's saying something. Wallace right behind him. This time, Nemechek has the bottom. And will make the pass. Look at Darrell just dive right under yep. there. And you saw the red dirt fly. That was the apron <laughs> off the racetrack. Usually when you get off the pavement, you're in trouble. Today, off the pavement doesn't hurt a whole lot. Dare we say it, this is the longest run of green flag racing we've had today. Boy, Grissom, his car is not running 40 miles an hour off the corner. He's, he's in a world of hurt. 146 laps, four laps from halfway. Grissom continuing to fade, trying to hang on. Trouble in one, and it was Steve Boley coming a foul of Dale Earnhardt. I don't know if Boley spun just before Dale got there or just what triggered that. But Boley goes around, and he brings out the 14th caution of the day. 
Now, coming up later today, you'll see in its entirety the BP Fins Game 92. Big matchup with all these pro anglers led by Hank Parker. That's coming up next. It was a big break for Steve Grissom as we come up on the halfway point. He got to make that pit stop that he so badly needed under the caution flag. Been a lot of stops up and down pit road. Uh, Glenn can update us on what's been happening down there. Here's Grissom back in again. Ward Burton getting tires. The Tracy Leslie car is on pit road. Tom Peck is in. Ricky Craven. They're still working on Kenny Wallace's car underneath the hood of that machine. There's, there he is right here. We're talking about Grissom. Okay, let's go down to Glenn Jarrett with Grissom. Well, as you said, Mike, a tremendous break from Grissom. He is back in changing left side tires this time. He had a tire going down. They knew that. The problem was they just didn't know which tire. He needed to change all four tires. Got a caution. He should be a contender now. That's been one of the strongest cars all day. He's got four fresh tires. Let's take you back through the field a little bit here. Jimmy Hensley is the race leader. Chuck Bowen is second. 75 car that's which Miller is third and remember the guy who had the first problem of the race and came in and had to get tire Bobby Labonte Bobby's a fourth place car on the lead lap he's surviving <laughs> yeah he's come back well Robert Presley is fifth Jeff Burton is sixth Joe Nemechek Dale Earnhardt Jack Sprague Daryl Waltrip Bobby Donner are all on the lead lap and so is Jimmy Spencer and Mike Wallace Roger Green Hensley's car really looked good at the start of the race. Well, and once he got in the lead, he stretched it out a little bit. Now he's leading the race, but he's got somebody putting a lot of heat on him right now. Chuck Bound is all over him. Let's add uh, Ward Burton to those cars on the lead lap. We heard, Halfway. Mike, we heard Chuck Bound's guy say that he was just going to take it easy and stay out of trouble and keep that track position. And sure enough, there is. He's right in contention now. He's fighting for the lead. Hensley and Bound, they battle for championships. Look at these two, 48 Jack Sprague and 20 Mike Wallace. They have traded everything but phone numbers here in the last 30 laps. There's not a straight piece left on either of those two cars. And right behind them, Jimmy Spencer. Let's stay with this battle for a bit, because it's going to be a dandy. Jim Bound eases into the wall coming out of turn two and gets going again. But the caution is coming out, Mike. Yep. He's sitting in a bad place on the track. They went in through the caution. Not before Mike Wallace and Jack Sprague got another piece of each other. You said they didn't know their phone numbers. I'm sure they'll be asking this week. <laughs> but Jim Bound, looks like Jim just got in the marbles up out of turn number two. Pretty much saved the car, but looked like he was going to park up there. So we got another caution. 15 caution flag and two red. Man. Let's have another look at what happened. Bring out the latest one. Here's where we see the car already loose on the outside and whipped back to the right. The only thing he can do there is just get out of the throttle and stand on the brakes. And he, he was probably running 60 miles an hour. He first saw him and he just parked the car and you just had to stop and start over again to get the thing straightened back out. His older brother Chuck shaved his mustache for the first time in 15 years to change his luck this weekend. You think Jim ought to grow one? I don't know. He better pass it on to his brother. But here he is. He's running second without a mustache, so I don't know about that. <laughs> Chuck is doing fine. This is Jim, the younger bound brother. The bank of granite on the side of that car. Many wishes he had fenders of granite today. Oh, man. He's going to need to float alone to straighten it out. <laughs> I think you're right. Ed Furry back in the pits. Tom Peck, and they're still working on Kenny Wallace's car. He's got still got a chance of winning this thing. What do you mean? He's just won him down. Well, yeah. <laughs> the way things are going. <laughs> Pitt finished third behind the pace car and the sweeper. We're going to, in a bit here, uh, take you back through the whole field. Let you know where your driver is running. Steve Boley and Tom Peck completing pit stops. Jack Sprague coming back out. One to go. We'll go back to green. Hensley the leader. Bound in second. Butch Miller up to third. And Bobby Labonte fourth. Fifth, Robert Presley. Sixth, Jeff Burton. Seventh, Dale Earnhardt. Eighth is Joe Nemechek. Ninth would be Darrell Waltrip. And I believe that's Bobby Dodder. It is in the tenth spot just ahead of Mike Wallace and Jimmy Spencer. Steve Grissom and Ward Burton. Mike, on all these restarts, there's always that option of you being able to go the outside lane to get your lap back. Nobody is trying that option. There's, there's Tommy Houston. He says, I'll try her one more time. He's out there on the outside trying to get a lap back. No one's been able to do it yet. Everybody else single file. And he's done it. Tommy Houston runs to the front and gets a lap back from leader Jimmy Hensley. 
Maybe you know, a little professional courtesy there. Yeah, he gave him a little bit of room. You know, Spencer was, yeah, a couple of times Spencer got beat, but he didn't get up to speed. This time it looked like Tom Houston just drove by him. Jay Fogelman bounced off the wall in turn four, but we're still green. And here comes Hensley right back at Tommy Houston. And the hometown hero is going to come around. Around on the front bumper of Jimmy Hensley's car. A tough, tough day for the Houston. I tell you what, that was a set of, you know, they both wanted that inside lane, and he saw that nose in there, and all he could do was turn left and try to hold him off to get that lap back, and neither one of them wanted to give the inside lane up. My list of caution incidents is going to page two. at 16 caution flags for lap 162. Mike, usually on these short track races, when you see bumping and beating and banging at the level we see it today, they put them in the penalty box. But the only problem, I don't think there'd be a car left on the track if we started penalizing people for bumping. It's just a part of the game today, and I'm telling you, there's no way to race out there without getting these cars into each other. Let's give an attaboy to Steve Bird and the Kenny Wallace crew. They have that car running and rolling again and going back into this race to pile up Bush Grand National points. There's the view. Kenny is a lot of laps down. We'll try to get a number for you, but he's back out in points. One to go. Not much change in the running order up front. And Hoosier tired cars are running first and third. Hensley, the leader, and Butch Miller running third. Chuck Bounds splitting them in second place. And this time it'll be Jim Bound up on the outside trying to get a lap back from Jimmy Hensley. Hensley will probably be a little bit more determined to keep him down. That last time it almost cost him the lead uh, battling with the car trying to get a lap back. And here comes Hensley. Hard on the throttle out of turn number four. And the Bound brothers are side by side. Chuck runs off into the corner and Jim gets hung to the outside. The leaders whip by him on the bottom side. Presley, now Labonte. And Bound trying to tuck in there and gets a little nip and tuck from Labonte. Here's Bush Miller up off the corner. He's underneath Chuck Bound. He's got plenty of running room and he's going to take Robert Presley with him. Boy, once the guy gets under there, the, whoever's with him is going along also. That's starting to remind me of Martinsville. Yeah, Martinsville, a lot of braking involved, and I'm telling you, we're getting into that here. You know, sail it nine miles off corner and slam on the brakes and stop. Stay on that inside. Trouble in two at three. How many times is that for it? He's had a rough time of it today. One, two, three, four, four times. I tell you what, though, Mike, you know, not saying in a bad way, but when your car is off the pace a little bit and you have a car that's not handling well and then you get under these conditions, well, then it's virtually impossible to hold on to it. If it was the track was in good shape, he'd still be having trouble. But boy, it really multiplies on a day like right. this. I agree. He and Chuck, uh, he and Jim Bound have each been involved in four caution flags today. Caution 17, too shy of the record at lap 169 now. 131 laps to go. This field update is brought to you by Napa because there are no unimportant parts. because there are no unimportant parts. Jeff Burton, we did get back to green, and Jeff Burton got tied up with another car and brought out this caution flag at lap 173, the 18th caution of the day. NASCAR officials removing some uh, debris. Well, it used to be race car parts, now it's just debris from the track in the front straightaway. We won't have to be doing this much longer because the rest of the pieces that are hooked on these cars are welded on. <laughs> this, that's just the small pieces that are flying <laughs> off now. Let's have another look as they come out of turn number four. Burton was on the lead lap running well. There he is, top of the screen. I think Jack, he and Jack Sprague got together and then he ended up on the front of Dale Earnhardt's car. Yeah, they got slowed down coming off the corner. He nailed them right up off the corner. 
Jeff did a nice job of avoiding the wall. Now, as that was going on, at the front of the pack, Tommy Houston had gotten around Jimmy Hensley on the restart, and Houston has gotten back a lap. So he'll be at the tail end of the field, and in fact is now making a pit stop. Jeff Burton is back in, Ed Faree is in the pits. 18 cautious like 19 is the record. 123 laps to go. This race was 276 laps. They lengthened it to 300 this year so that each car would have to make a pit stop. And Mike, I took a, kind of took a little in general boat down through the garage area, and most of the guys were still saying they could go 300 laps, which is hard to believe. It's 100 miles. These cars go 100 miles a long time, but on a third mile racetrack, they pull a lot of gear, and it's hard to believe they can go the distance. One, uh, one car hunter told me they, they ran two to 300 RPM less here than Martinsville. And uh, they thought, given the distance, they could do it. The straightaways are so short, you're not in the throttle as long, gulping so much fuel, so might have a shot. Trouble on the Tom Peck car as he waved a couple of drivers by. Let's see if we do get green this time. We will. You hear that hung up before they ever get to the start and finish line. They ran together coming up off the corner. The three abreast going down to the first turn behind the leaders here. field tries to sort itself out here. Butch Miller gets kicked to the outside, and he's going to go back at the top of your screen. Yep. Way back. Miller was a contender for the lead and got hung on the outside. Can't get back in. And Hensley's up to the fence in turn one and saves it. Boy, somebody took a whale of a shot at the left side of his car. Mike, that was the first and second place cars were running one, two. Now they're back in the rear of the pack. Left rear tire reported on Jimmy Hensley's car. He and Butch Miller, amazingly, both of the Hoosier shot cars going from first to third, first and third, to deep in the pack. There's Miller in trouble at the back of the field. Food country car. That'll put Robert Presley up front, the Darlington winner. Here's another look. Here there, Mike, coming off the fourth turn. They, it gets inside of him a little bit. It crawls all the way up the left rear of, the, of Hensley's car. That's Presley. Hensley's out there. Look at the loose stuff we're talking about. Look at his flying just like driving through the dirt. Did a heck of a job to keep the car straight through that and get back in line. What a great save. And Robert Presley nearly had to file a flight plan down the front straightaway. He got the takeoff angle and nearly speed. Here's Earnhardt and Bound going at it for second place. Now, as you go down to turn one there, you look right at the scoreboard. No question in these fellas' mind, they're running for second spot here. And here comes Bobby Labonte right up with them. Robert Presley way out in front now after that fracas with Jimmy Hensley. Boy, these cars, when they come off the corner, you normally come off and you drift out to the wall. These cars are coming off the corner, heading to the infield, <laughs> just to keep anyone from getting under. What's the 63 car? And it's the thing to do. It comes off the corner, to the sail out the wall, he really moves to the inside of the racetrack and protects the inside lane a little bit. And that's the best. Oh, trouble in one. And give that one to Jimmy Spencer. Yeah, Jimmy got into the back of Labonte's. They got down in the corner there. Or up under him a little bit. Jimmy came way down below the yellow line. And it wasn't even a question of trying to outdive him in the corner. He just slammed Jim, uh, just slammed Bobby Labonte up out of the groove. Well, we tied the record at lap uh, 187. 19 caution flags. As Jimmy Spencer sends Bobby Labonte for a ride. Good thing the flag man doesn't get paid like by the wave. Or it could be trouble. 100, 188 is on the board. I don't know if we'll get another look at that, but here's uh, Bobby Labonte just easing around. And uh, they've got his number on the board. I don't know. That he's either got a problem with a car or something hanging off or something they'd want to bring him in, or, or maybe it was something that happened in the pits. It's hard for me to believe it was something that happened on the racetrack that so much happened out there that they'd be bringing someone in to penalize him. Well, they're holding the, uh, the signboard up in his pit. And now Jimmy Hensley is in. And Labonte is coming in. And here comes Bobby Labonte. I don't see an NASCAR official there. Glenn's there. Glenn? 
Uh, Bobby Labonte's in for right side tires, and boy, are they mad down here. Bobby Labonte's too mad. He said he couldn't even talk to me if he wanted to. Even Bobby Labonte's wife, who's normally the most mild mannered person in the world, is upset. Uh, Spencer ran all over them. They're just upset with the way some of the drivers are carrying on out there. They understand the conditions on the racetrack, but there's not a lot of happy campers down here right now. Jimmy Hensley had a tire cut. When he went up in the marbles there, he cut a right side tire. They did come in and change that, so he should be back up to speed also. And here's the body back in. Now, he had to do this in two pit stops so as not to lose a lap by changing four tires. And remember, the tire rule in effect at the start of this race has been lifted by NASCAR. They can change tires under caution without penalty. So Nemechek has made a stop. You see him going by, and now left side. Or Bobby Labonte will get a green in one lap. Robert Presley is the leader. Chuck Bowne is in second, Dale Earnhardt in third, and Jimmy Spencer has displaced Labonte as the fourth place car. Spencer was leading the race earlier and dropped back some. And that's not saying anything unusual. A lot of them have dropped back. Let's have another look. There's 77. He makes the call. Oh, he's always the way below the line there on the flat part. Labonte turned in and they got together. Not too much question about that one. Uh, green flag is back out again. And Jim Bowne gets a lap back from Robert Presley. Or does he? <laughs> Hold on, Jim. He had her back for just a minute, but now the problem is he's got between Chuck Bowne and the leader. Chuck's going to need to get on around. Yeah, this is more than just sibling rivalry here. Because Jim is is now in a position to hold Chuck up from a chance to win this thing. You look at the condition of these cars, you believe we still have 107 laps to go? Boy, they pretty well used them up. Boy, now Presley is pulling away with uh, Jim Bowne in between them. That's let Presley get in a real big lead. Jim's not going to get to stay there long. They black flagged him for jumping the restart, and he will pit. And boy, when he pulled the inside lane, nobody wants to pass him on the outside. No, Earnhardt wouldn't go around him. Can you blame him? No, you get out there and you're gone. When they call him to turn down pit road, it virtually stopped the lead pack from even racing. They had to just park behind him. Stop and go for Jim Bound. Well, that split the field up pretty well. Here comes Presley, the leader. A long gap back to Chuck Bound. The Nescafe car in second. And that Western steer machine for Earnhardt. Remember, Earnhardt in the 15 car today for Kenny Schrader. There's Earnhardt, and right with him, Jimmy Spencer in 77, the sixth tire machine, and the channel lock car for pole sitter, Steve Grissom. Well, Spencer's trying the outside. Nobody's been able to pull up. Right there's not so bad where he's going to have his work cut out for him. It's getting in three on the outside. Nobody's been able to make that move, make it stick. But there's Spencer. He turned down and made the car stay down there. That's the first time we see somebody pass on the outside going in three. That's the wildest thing I've seen today. Yes, yeah, Spencer's got her wound up now. And, uh, running so good that he was able to make a move we haven't seen all day long. Well, this battle goes on at fourth position on back. Let's check in the leader's pit with Glenn Jarrett. Well, guys, we're sitting here watching the leader Robert Preston pull away from the field, and it's really quite amazing because when he took that airborne flight there over Jimmy Hensley's car, when he came down, Rick Pearson, the crew chief, said it knocked the toe in out of line pretty badly. But now he's motoring away from the field, so one of those rare instances when you do something like that, and it actually helps the race car. Let's keep an eye on him. Turn one. Steve Boley, the Iowa driver, and he had help. So the 20th caution of the day is up for Steve Boley up in turn number one, driving the Jack Ingram car. We'll be right back to Hickory after this. Steve Boley's car will not steer. He is right opposite his pit location, but could not turn the car to get there. Have a look at the way those cars are sliding up out of turn number four, Mike Wallace. And then here comes that maroon car, his bowling. Let's have a look here. Yeah, they got in in the corner. 27 car trying to get under him. They get together going down in the corner. 10 car turns around. Bam. Yep. And uh, I believe Ward Burton was black flag. Yeah, I think and, they did uh, black flag him for that. It's the first time today we've seen that happen. Even the cars that aren't wrecking are almost wrecking off Ward. We're seeing the back end fly up under all the cars. Yeah, he got in there, backed it in, and the car slapped the wall like that, knocked that toe in so crazy that the, both front wheels are turned almost together. They can't steer it. And they can't push it. 
There's Mike Wallace's car. That says Daly's first aid on this. Well, trust me, it did at the start of the race. Daly's first aid now. Dick Moroso car. Left side looks pretty good. <laughs> he and Jack Sprague have really been going at it today. We're going to get a green this time. 207 laps down, 93 to go. The Mountain Dew 500 at Hickory. Late model stock car action later here at the track. Green flag. Jeff Burton trying to get a lap back. Driving the TIC financial car, number eight. Here comes Spencer, and he bangs Chuck Bown, and he gets underneath. And Grissom trying to make the same move. And he gets in there. And it's a matter of just muscling your way under. Chuck Bown said he get out of the groove and had to just stop and restart the car. He went all the way, way back in the line when he got hung on it outside. Folks, it is the bump and stumble 500. You bump somebody, they stumble, you move up. Waltrip and Earnhardt coming into turn one. And Darrell makes the pass. There's Hensley leading down the back straightaway. He's, the last couple times this thing grew start, he's been able to get a good bite up off the corner. Most cars can't do that. Presley, that is. Robert Presley up at the front of the pack. Jimmy Spencer now second. There's Mike Wallace and Chuck Bound battling, and they've been going at it. Tommy Houston right with them. Seems like after that last caution, Ooh. Chuck Bound lost something. You know, he got out that loose stuff. He might have cut a tire down because we've seen this several times that a guy start losing a little ground, then he goes in, he's got a flat tire. He moved all the way out in the loose stuff, and he probably picked up his deal with the tires and losing the tires now. So Chuck Bound, who had hoped to run this entire race without a pit stop, may need to make one here. Mike, he's going to probably do just like we saw earlier, try to run until they do lap him, and then if they catch him, he'll come in. He'll try to catch a caution. And they've been easy to catch today because we've had plenty of them. There's Robert Presley leading this race. Jeff Burton, the lap down. Jimmy Spencer, the third car in line at 77. He is the second-place car. Spencer is really, really coming now. Then Steve Grissom. Trouble in three. Tracy Leslie climbs up and over the Mike Wallace car. Something had started to go on Wallace's car, and he had a real slow entry into the corner. And it was as if the other car could not slow down or stop. Chuck Bound did catch that caution that we were talking about he needed. He'll have the opportunity to pin on the caution now. But these two cars were, one of them was completely airborne, went up over the 20 car getting in the corner. Mike Wallace has cut down the left rear and will come to pit road with what is left of Dick Moroso's race car. 216 laps complete. Caution flag 21 on the day. We'll be back to Hickory after this. Complete. Robert Presley, the leader. Jimmy Spencer, Darrell Waltrip, Tommy Houston, and now Jack Sprague has climbed to fifth on the leaderboard unofficially. Houston's up in there. Here's the rest of the top 10 as we get ready to go back to green here in a lap or two. Now Steve Grissom just completed a pit stop. They put left side tires on that car. Chuck Bown is in. He did have a tire going down. Mike Wallace and Tracy Leslie, who were both involved in that crash, made pit stops right together. And a little hand signaling going on. And going out of the pits, they did it also. And there's Earnhardt. Those of you tuning in to TNN, expecting to see Finn, the golf skins game, on water. As these pro anglers, Hank Parker, Roland Martin, Gary Klein, and Jimmy Houston will go at it for $70,000 in the BP Fins Game 92. That will be seen in its entirety right after the Mountain Dew 500 takes the checkered flag here on TNN Today. So stay tuned for that coming up in its entirety. Mike Wallace is back on pit road. Bobby Dotter is in with the hood up. Still working on Chuck Bounds' car. And Steve Grissom completes his stop just pulling away there. One to go. And we'll go racing and in boy, one lap. But Glenn? There's a problem with the lug nuts on the left front of Chuck Bounds' car. This is the second time they've been in to change the left side tires. Principally the left front, they have not gotten that old tire off yet. There seems to be a lug nut jammed on that tire. They don't know yet which tire has the, has the cut in it, so it could be the left front, and they can't change it. We'll stay cautioned for at least another lap here safety truck still working in turn number three cleaning up debris from the Tracy Leslie Mike Wallace crash by the way we mentioned Dave Marcus standing by in relief for Tracy uh, we're told that uh, Tracy 
despite that broken left leg, is still in the car. Broken motorcycle riding. And he's got a hand-operated clutch to get him through today. And Mike Wallace back in the pit. And Jim Bound has just been turned around at this exit to pit road. Well, that's watching Kenny Wallace. Spun one on pit road. They uh, got together, it looked like, coming out of the pits. Spun one out. Steve Boley has parked his car, the Iowa driver. I'll show you what happened there. Well, they were trying to get double wide for the restart. Oh, yeah, they <laughs> battling for that position. Even on the caution, he was all wet on the racetrack, and they just got together. I guess we'll see it all today. That's the first time I've seen one knocked off the track under the pits. I guess that doesn't count as another caution. 21 caution play. And Chuck Bound back in the pits. Jeff Hensley and crew are going to take one more shot at changing that left front tire. Let's see how they do, Glenn. Mike, what they do a lot of times, they use an old socket on it. They got it off that time. They use an old socket that almost worn out, so it doesn't hang the lug nuts on it. What they could possibly do is put a brand new socket on it and pull a lug nut off that is a little bit worn. So they were able to get it off, and he's been needing that change. Hit board up for Jeff Burton as well, and now we get one to go. When I say that, Mike, they purposely use an old socket, so it will be real fast to spit those nuts out of there when they take them off, and uh, they probably have to go with something new to get that thing off of there. The last thing you want is to pull that wrench off and have a, have a nut still in it. Yeah, they want them to fall out as quick as possible. So it'll be Presley on the restart with Jimmy Spencer right behind. Daryl Walter, the noise you heard was we had a crash in the booth. I'll yep. tell you, I've, I've seen everything today. Light fixture just Whereas fell out. The light just fell out of the sky down on our shoulder here. Well... We're going back to green. <laughs> Robert Presley, Jimmy Spencer, Daryl Waltrip. Neither Chuck Bound nor Steve Grissom could get a lap back as Bound goes up and into the wall. And I don't think they're going to throw the caution. Nope. You've we're got going to stay green. Here comes here's Spencer getting up under him as we were watching this car down the back straightaway. Spencer's making a run at the lead. And Grissom goes up high. And Presley is loose and dragging his bumper. Chuck Bound, or rather Jim Bound, pits his car, and the right front is torn off, and he'll be done for the day. Here comes Jimmy Spencer. Right up and underneath Robert Presley. Something is going to happen here. Mike, that's no coincidence that the back bumper's torn up in the right front of the other one. They got together down in the corner a while ago as that other caution was happening. Here's Spencer down on the inside. And they want a piece of Spencer's car flying off. And the leader of this race has just been Black Flag. If I was him, I'd run about two more. It's a good chance he'll lose that piece off the car. Spencer's working on it. Looks like just a piece of trim. That's a rubber bumper cover on all these cars, so it would just be a trim piece there. But they have Black Flag Robert Preston. You might see something. If Spencer gets up there and knocks it off, he won't have to black. You won't have to come in. No, he won't get close to him now. So Spencer might lay back now, seeing that caution there. If he were to knock it the rest of the way off there, he's going to. He wouldn't have to come in. So Spencer's going to give him a little bit of room right now. Presley's number is on the Black Flag board. I think they give you three laps. I'm not certain, but I think they give you three laps, and then they pick up your scorecard. And here comes Spencer, underneath Presley. Not that time. Well, we have seen it all today. Because and here's Waltrip. Darrell trying on the outside had second thoughts about that. And that stacks the field up behind them. And now Presley pits. What a bitter disappointment that must be. Not and only that, the piece is off the car. It's gone. He pitted and the piece fell off going down the back straightaway. Ricky Pearson reaching under trying to find it to pull it off. It's gone. And Presley goes back out on the tail end of the lead lap. And here's the battle for the lead. Here's Waltrip now all over Spencer for the lead. Bobby Dotter on pit road. Tommy Houston, after being involved in a couple of fracases himself, has come to third. And Mike Wallace and Tracy Leslie are going to hammer each other here. They come out of turn number three right in front of the leaders. They got together again. They both hit the wall and they both kept going that time. Hard to believe. Now here's going to be a bad situation. Here's the leaders. Neither one of them want to get outside of the 20 car. Even though he's not going fast, they don't want out there. Losing body panels all over three and four over here again. A big chunk of bumper. Somebody's front bumper cover up in turn three. Caution. Here comes the run back to the flag. They've gotten around Mike Wallace. And it will be Spencer and Waltrip. Steve Grissom will not get his lap back. 
And they almost ran over the pace car down in one. What has not happened today? Well, just a minute till we get talking about one particular part of the track, Mike, there's something happened somewhere else. And uh, there's a complete bumper section off there. I'm, I don't have any idea whose car that came off of to tell you it was either red or orange. Looks like a front bumper. Uh, no, nah, Tracy, I think Tracy had already lost his. That was a fresh one. Now, here's the piece laying we're looking at now. That was the piece that was on the back of Bob Presley's car. Right. And they told him to come in. The time he came in, it fell off going into third turn. One more lap, and he wouldn't have had to come in. But uh, that's just the way it works. Now, Tracy Leslie, after that fracas with Mike Wallace, there's uh, Leslie's car. The right front fender, can't see from this angle, but it stove in against the tire. He's going to have to pit. And that may have been his bumper cover. I thought he'd lost it earlier in one of those... It, well, no, it's got right, and it looks like a rear section the way the okay. right is on that piece on the track, but it's just hard to tell. There's the right front pushed again, in against the tire on Leslie's car. Yeah. yeah could have been rear bumper cover. You know, he hit the wall there just before. Here's, yeah, there's a rear bumper section. It says, some <laughs> it says brakes. Brakes in there. <laughs> I would think it came off of this Detroit gasket car. <laughs> Probably okay. his rear section, maybe. I believe you're right. There's Robert Presley's car. What a tough break. He pitted while leading after the black flag for that piece of bumper cover. Glenn Jarrett's there. Well, they just they just came in to, uh, to make sure there wasn't anything else dragging there, Mike. The car, as you said and as you saw, the piece fell off. They're pretty upset about it, but there's not anything they can do. NASCAR was in the right, and, uh, you know, their condition was, hey, when the car got here, there wasn't anything wrong with it. But that happened coming as they entered pit road, so just a bad break for him. He is still on the lead lap, I believe, does they may be holding Tracy Leslie. There's a NASCAR official right in front of that car as they uh, pull that fender out. There's Presley's car being worked on once again, this time for right side tires. Mike, he was in the rear of the field. That was a good move on their part to come on in. Might as well put tires on it because they were calling in by NASCAR with the rear of the field. He'll have a fresh set of tires. He's got a lot of work ahead of him. Now there's the NASCAR official with his uh, making his notes on the Tracy Leslie car. Looks like a five lapper to me. He's been there two laps already, and usually they have like five lap penalties for different infractions. Well, he and Mike Wallace have both uh, said they now they're going to let him go. Jimmy Spencer, the leader. Darrell Waltrip is second. What a great run for Tommy Houston to fight his way back up to third, and for Jack Sprague, who flirted with the lead lap all day. Bobby Labonte in fifth after early trouble. He struggled back. Ward Burton, Dale Earnhardt. Joe Nemechek, Jimmy Hensley, and Butch Miller. That's the top 10 at 240 laps. 60 to go. And they're picking up pieces up in turn number one. That's why we're still under caution for another lap or two here after the most recent altercation. Boy, just watching as they came by, Mike, uh, Darrell Walter has got the cleanest looking car on the racetrack. He's got all the fenders on it, all the front panels, rear sections, and not very many donuts, so he's been taking care of that thing today, and it looked like just before that caution came out that he might have something for Spencer leading the race. Glenn Jarrett's in Jack Sprague's pit. Well, Jack has done an amazing job today. He takes off now. They were looking at the uh, left front fender. There's some uh, further damage there, but uh, I told one of his crew members a while ago, that's the strangest thing I'd ever seen. They took a left rear tire off of it. The sidewall of the tire was worn out. There was plenty of tread on it, but he'd run over so many things that the sidewall was worn out. <laughs> but he's doing a heck of a job. He's already made up laps twice today. We're running fourth right now. Ah, uh, the things we've seen today we've never seen before. How about Tommy Houston? Uh, had a family tragedy, as we mentioned earlier. His father passed away yesterday. Uh, Tommy taking time out from the family preparations to run this race, and he has run his way up to third spot after being involved in some early difficulty. Green flag, and it caught Steve Grissom napping just a bit as Spencer and Walter get away. Now, if Daryl Walter is going to contest Jimmy Spencer for the lead, that paint job will not be pristine for long. Boy, Daryl got all the way under him, and easily, I mean, excuse me, Spencer made a move all the way to inside the racetrack. He's protecting that inside line. 56 laps to go. Walter has kept that car in one piece, as you said. He's babied it. He's stayed out of trouble. And now, if he's going to go for it, now's the time. I don't know if he goes for it, if he's going to have a nice looking car when it's over, because it's almost been a battle and shove to get around the guy in front of you. Tommy Houston is third. Bobby Labonte is the fourth place car. The lapped cars of Steve Grissom and Jeff Burton between Houston and Labonte. Then it's Warren Burton, Earnhardt, Nemechek, Hensley. 
Looks like Spencer was able to pull out a little bit on the restart. Darrell actually had the inside line. I thought he had Spencer going to go. Here's Darrell getting a shove up off the corner. Boy, he got the thing completely sideways. Uh, or Steve Grissom got him completely yes, sideways. Yes, <laughs> Grissom got into him up off the corner. Gave him a little bit of shove and took his position away from him. But it's just track position. Waltrip is still the second place car. Grissom is that lap back and he's going to go up and have to battle Spencer. And we've already seen Spencer doesn't give up a position very easily. It's kind of unusual in the Bush Grand National Series that Spencer is he in trouble. No, Spencer made him go to the outside and he actually got such a bite off the corner and went right around him on the outside. I think he could see that Grissom was able to get under him. He knew if he got under him, then Walter would follow him. So he just gave him the outside line. At the right of your screen, they have black flagged the number eight car, Jeff Burton. That car is smoking pretty well from the rear end. And Tommy Houston sends Walter up out of the groove and out of second place. And back to about 10th. That's just Ooh. what it took, one slip, and there he goes. So now the running order. Now the running order has Jimmy Spencer, Tommy Houston in second, and that will move Bobby Labonte up to third. Ward Burton, Dale Earnhardt, Joe Nemechek, and then Walter Ben Burton's going to go around in two. He got up too high and spun. No contact. No and caution. No caution. He's sitting on the racetrack. Well, the starter was busy working the passing play. Yeah, he's, uh, he's back up to speed now, but he was sitting in a bad place, and they left the green out, but he's yellow, going on. That yellow flag must be in tatters by now. It's had such a workout. And now Spencer getting around Mike Wallace. And Tommy Houston beginning to put the pressure on. It's been a long time since Houston has won a Bush Grand National race. If I'm not mistaken, that last win came right here at Hickory. That's right, Mike. And you know, when we were up here for the rain out, Tommy couldn't run a lick. He couldn't even get here to take a provisional start. He couldn't run a lick. We saw him the night before races. Boy, I'm in trouble. Well, this delay has let him get his car worked out, and he's really hooked up right now. Tommy Houston is on a winless streak that encompasses 49 or 50 races. Smoke out of Earnhardt's car as he comes past. There's Spencer, the leader. 45 laps to go. Looks like a right front tire rubbing on Earnhardt's car there. Yep. Back a little bit further back. There's Houston. Tommy Houston's last Bush win was July 1990. I'm correct, in South Boston, Virginia. But he started his career here. Of course, lives here in town. And what a better place to snap out of that streak and what a better weekend to do it than right here, right now. 43 laps to go. And Houston is closing in on Jimmy Spencer. Yeah, he's coming in. You know, Jimmy was able to pull away, but boy, here, here he comes now. He's really moved right up on the rear bumper. Spencer's been the kind of guy you could run him down, but you couldn't pass him. And we've got to see if he's capable of doing it now. Look at the fans the fan standing up. This is his hometown. The black flag is out for Earnhardt. He's been smoking real bad on the right front. He's got something rubbing. If he doesn't come in, he's going to blow the tire out. And up front, it's about to heat up. 41 laps to go. Here goes Tommy Houston. He's got the inside line on him. Hickory's hometown hero, and Spencer gives him a talking to. Tommy gets the lead. But I think that right front is going to be rubbing here. Boy, right rear, excuse me, right rear. He didn't want to give it up. He, when he stood, he's got by him. He turned down. He thought he could get back up under him. They got hung up coming off the corner. Earnhardt, stop and go. Don't know what they fixed in that length of time. They might have got a tire up handled. Yeah, I saw a big bar, and they pulled out a little bit on that. And here's Earnhardt popping up right in front of Jimmy Spencer on the racetrack. And that will give Houston a good lead. And everybody here at Hickory is on their feet. Tommy Houston in the Rosa Stores car. Trying to pull off his first win in nearly 50 Bush Grand National races. Started this race dead last in a provisional spot. Now there's second place, Jimmy Spencer behind Earnhardt, who had made a pit stop to cure a tire rub. You know, it's going to be hard for Earnhardt just to pull over. He was right there battling with these guys directly behind him for position. And he's still thinking that he can get up there and get around Tommy Houston. And of course, he comes out, he's back in the lead lap That's again, right. so he's not going to give up much ground. And as we say that, he's battling right now to get that lap back. Well, the problem here, if he gets that inside line, Spencer has opportunity to go with him. 
Oh, here comes Dale, and he gets just barely into Houston. Never mind that these two are in-laws. What? Spencer just, for the moment, biding his time. Spencer's cheering for Earnhardt right now because if <laughs> Earnhardt can get by, right now, Tommy Houston's best bet is motion Dale outside and tell him to go around and lift early, get in the corner, let him go on. I don't know if he's going to do that or not. He can let one car around the outside, but he can't do it on the inside. Trouble out of four. Jay Fogelman spins. Darrell Waltrip just misses him, and that'll bring out the caution. Here they come to the flag, and Earnhardt will stay a lap down. That shows you how far that in-law stuff goes. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't pull over and say, hey, here's your lap back. In-laws and outlaws. Well, actually, the best place for Earnhardt from Houston's perspective is right behind him. Yep. Keeping Jimmy Spencer back there. Well, you hate to wish for an ending in the sport, but wouldn't it be nice if Tommy Houston could break that winless, long winless streak and win here at his home track. 33 laps to go. Jay Fogelman's car has brought out the 23rd caution flag of the day. We'll be back to Hickory right after these messages. To go, Tommy Houston on his hometown track where he started his career. 29 laps from trying to pick up his first Bush Grand National victory in some 50 events. Earnhardt around the outside gets his lap back from Houston. And now it's Tommy to battle Jimmy Spencer for the lead. Battle is probably going to be because there's Spencer blowing the horn one, two, three, four times up off the corner. Back to one. Earnhardt in front of the leaders now, the last car on the lead lap. Bobby Labonte comes in under Jimmy Spencer, doesn't have enough room. Robert Presley is right there, Joan Nemechek. Chuck Bowne and Jack Spray. There's Spencer really hammering on the back bumper of Tommy Houston. It's hard to protect that lead, and the guy gives you a shot right in the center of the corner, breaks the rear loose, and you have to chase it with the front end, and it moves you out a little bit. You get a hands for holding him off. Spencer perhaps has the car best at getting horsepower to the ground. He's shown here on several occasions in these last 100 laps. I think there's a lot more riding with Tommy Houston, though. It's just a car and ability to get it to the ground, and Presley is in the wall very hard at turn one. 276 laps. Earnhardt's going to get his lap back, but that that might be a, a minor detail with just uh, 30 laps to go, 20 laps to go. I don't see how Robert Presley could drive away from that accident, but no, he did. That thing, I mean, it's swatted the wall. Look at the front of it. It's got to have the radiator and everything wrapped around the engine, but he's got it running. How does he see? Let's have a look. Mike, here come the leaders up off four turn. There's Presley, goes to the outside, and he bangs the wall on the, with the right rear. Now he's out of control, way up there. He's gonna go back. The car is gonna turn around and hit nose first in the wall. And watch this, this is a jolt right here. He really wrapped everything back around the front of the engine. I was surprised as Mike that he got it cranked up and pulled off. I wanna show you that again, Neil, uh, for another reason. As Robert Presley comes around, apparently he can. He's got a place where he can see. He's, he's gonna finish this race. Now, as we see this again from the same angle, when he comes down the front stretch, watch the spray behind the car. Not yet, but now, that's those little pieces of oh, asphalt. Yeah. Whoosh, just, just like sandblasting everything up out of turn number one. Now, there's, there's no traction to be found anywhere there. Mike, in dirt track racing, they call it getting up on the cushion, and he was out of the cushion. He was up there out of control. They are jumping up and down on the hood of Presley's car. He says, yeah, I can see. Get me out there. It's like, put me in, coach. I got a helmet. Helmet's kind of bent in, but he's got one left. <laughs> What's not bent in? Green flag, 21 laps to go, and Houston gets a tremendous restart. And he needs it because if he's going to hold Spencer off, he needs a little bit of lead because Spencer can really work on him in the middle of the corner. 30 cars started this race, 17 are still running. 20 laps to go. And the hearts of Hickory, North Carolina, are riding with Tommy Houston. Trouble in two, Butch Miller and Daryl Waltrip get together. Miller going around, caution flag. Houston trying to win this thing one lap at a time. That's, boy, I tell you, once you get a restart as a driver, you don't, you hate to see that thing just continuously come out. And Robert Presley spun in the middle of all that as well. 
Caution at lap 282. A lost count. 25. 25, caution. You know, I, I thought at the beginning yeah. of this race that after the race there'd be heated words among the drivers, but they're gonna they're not gonna be able to remember who they're mad at. <laughs> the guy that did it to you early in the race, he's off the hook because you forgot it by now. You've been hit by so many other people. The guy did it to you 10 laps ago. <laughs> 17 to go. And counting. Glenn, what's the mood down at Tommy Houston's pit there? <laughs> well, right now they're pretty uh, pretty anxious, I guess. They're excited. They think that Tommy can hold him off. Uh, just a personal observation. I've been a, uh, an attendee of racing here in Hickory for a long, long time. This is Tommy Houston's country, and I do believe that in his heart, Jimmy Spencer knows that if he should happen to turn turn Tommy Houston and keep him from winning this race, I don't think he'd get out of here alive. So he's being very careful. Yeah, you, you might win the race, but you do have to go home after it's over. Right. Earnhardt gets tires, gets back out there. They named a grandstand today for a fellow who's meant an awful lot to this racetrack, both as a former competitor and as a track promoter. And as one of the legends of this sport, Ned Jarrett was honored in pre race ceremonies. And the Ned Jarrett Grandstand has been here at Hickory for a long, long time. And the people at the Ned Jarrett Grandstand got their money's worth today. Reserve seat up there is $30 today, and they've got about, by my count, about $120 worth of things going on on the racetrack. Harry Gant also has a grandstand named for him here. With 15 laps to go, Jeff Burton and Robert Presley make pit stops, and we're going green. Tommy really gets a good jump on these restarts. He's pulled away from him, but Spencer's been able to close in after he gets going again. Houston pulls him up out of turn number two. Spencer and Bobby Labonte right there. Yeah, Labonte's getting in the picture now. These other two guys have been abusing things a lot, and Labonte's coming on up. There have been seven Bush Grand National races this year. They've been won by seven different drivers. Spencer's got the ability with that car of his to get the nose up under him, right off the corner. And right there going in, he let, just lets her sail in and leans all over the back of him. And the, as they get right in here, this is where he's working on him. And I mean working, he's giving him a shove or two every lap. But he's been able to get the nose to him. There we go, see Tommy moves to the inside, protecting that inside line. Of the drivers that have won races so far this season, the highest place of those drivers is Ward Burke back in eighth spot. So we're almost, I say almost, guaranteed of an eighth different winner today. And Hensley and Burton get it together. Here's Labonte up underneath Spencer, but only for a moment. He had about two foot in the car under Spencer, but he, he backed out as I got out in the corner. Spencer right in the middle of the corner. He's coming hard, but here's Labonte. Labonte's got it. Now Spencer before just turned left when they got in this situation, trying to hold him back. He's out there on the outside. If he gets to that loose stuff, and he did. And he spins it off the wall and saves it. Amazing piece of driving by Jimmy Spencer. He used the wall as a cushion to straighten out his car, but it's, it's taken him all the way back to seventh place. Boy, that outside out there. There's Spencer got into the 48 car coming up off the inside there. But let's go back up front now where Bobby Labonte is trying to run down Tommy Houston with eight laps to go. And Labonte's a little loose out of four there. Joe Nemechek, and here's Chuck Bound back into the game. Yep, when the track is this slick, you're sitting there leading the race, you gotta be a little bit cautious. The guys behind you, they, don't, they can't afford to be cautious. They just gotta sail the car off in there, and they're gaining on him fast. Well, Houston had to get hard on the brakes for Jeff Burton going to pit road. Tommy did not want to go onto the top side of the racetrack. And right there is Bobby Labonte. Chuck Bound really went on by Nemechek for lap four. He's coming in right behind Labonte now. Chuck Bound's car looks as good or better than any of right now. And Walter takes a chunk out of Nemechek, battling for fourth spot. Five laps to go. Can Houston hang on for five laps? Labonte looked to the inside, but it was a feint, and two cars are in the wall in two. Jimmy Spencer and Jack Sprague. Chuck Bound was completely beside up beside Labonte, but the caution came out. Or he would have had that position going in one. Four laps to go. And there's Spencer coming around all of them. Will this race get restarted? Three to go. Here's the pace car. We may not get back to green. Houston, Labonte, 
Bound and Nemechek. There are three laps to go. There may be time for one lap under green. Let's have a look, Neil. Yeah, they came off the corner there. They got through the spins with the inside. 48 car got the rear hung out. And he gets the right rear out in that loose stuff. He wants to get back to the inside, but he can't get the car turned down in there. He gets in the loose stuff. There's Spencer right in front of him. They're both just going parallel right up through the loose stuff. Look at the stuff flying like you were talking about, Mike. Earnhardt is in the pits. They did not get one to go this time. This race will end under caution. They have to give them one to go before they put them back under green. Mike, it's almost fitting that it end under caution because that's the way it's run most of the day. 26 caution flags so far. Scott Houston, you heard out yelling on pit road, throw that white flag. Scott Houston jumping up and down, embracing the NASCAR official. They're going to get their checkered flag. <laughs> On the weekend, where Tommy Houston mourns the loss of his dad, he scores a personal mark here and breaks a nearly 50 race winless streak at his home race track where he started his career and has won track championships. He's the winningest Bush Grand National driver since the series started in 1982 at this racetrack, and he takes the checkered flag for his eighth Bush Grand National victory at Hickory. Sometimes you ran waste, win races, he won the war today, and I'm telling you, it was a war from the start. Folks, will stay live here and go to Victory Lane directly, so then we can bring you the Finns game in its entirety here on TNN. Tommy Houston started this race off in trouble, got a lap down, battled, got it back, lost it again, got it back again, got back on the lead lap, ran hard, and ran to win. And this must be a tremendously emotional victory for many, many reasons for Tommy Houston. Scott Houston, his son and crew chief, right there high-fiving it over the hood. Glenn Jarrett's there with our winner. Okay, guys. He's still being congratulated by the crew here, Scott Houston. All the guys did a great job. A day of conflicting emotions for Tommy Houston. We told him about, the, we told you about the death of his dad last night, but what an exciting day this was. Tommy, congratulations, man. Well, yeah, thank you, uh, Glenn. Uh, I was telling Scott on the cool down lap here, I said, uh, you know, my daddy didn't go to races a whole lot. He did back in the dirt days. and. I think today he must have been watching from up above. I sure hope he was. And uh, this, uh, by all means, is dedicated to my dad. Well, to, to break this drought in front of the hometown fans, man, it couldn't have been any better, could it? Well, yeah, that's true, Glenn. Uh, you know, anywhere, and we've been strong enough to run the rest of, I mean, the races this season, we've got caught up in some little deals. But this Rosie Store Buick, he just kept running the same every day. All we did was put tires on it. And uh, so Scott and those guys did a heck of a job on the setup. And Don Miller did, did a heck of a job on the engine. Well, I think a race driver did a heck of a job, too, in uh, making up laps twice out there. Good job, man. It was, uh, it was, uh, you know, about as bad as I've ever seen. You had to get in there and root people and, and knock them out of the way and everything. And, and I didn't, I didn't uh, you know, fault the people that knocked me out of the way early in the race. And I don't think that they did me later in the race. It's just a good, hard race, and especially under the conditions. Well, congratulations again to Tommy Houston. His pit crew has been named the Miller Genuine Draft Crew Chief or Crew of the Race Award. Back upstairs to Mike Joy. And a fitting honor there as well. Thank you, Glenn, for a lot of running around down there, especially during the red flag. Scott Houston and crew are the Miller Genuine Draft pit crew of the race, helping to celebrate Tommy Houston's victory. 30 cars started this race, 17 finished. The uh, the track sweeper, Neil, I had uh, four laps down to finish without a mark on it. It was a crazy day, but I tell you what, all the drivers did a great job. It, we had a lot of trouble, but it could have been a lot worse. Well, we've never seen a Bush Grand National event like this. And I don't know if I want to see another one. A great run for Tommy Houston. For Glenn Jarrett and Neil Bonnet, Mike Joy congratulating Tommy Houston on a great victory here at his home track, Hickory, in the Mountain Dew 500. Exclusive coverage of the Mountain Dew 500 on TNN has been brought to you by Haviland Formula 3 Motor Oil. Add more life to your car. And by... Miller Genuine Draft, cold filtered for real draft taste. So get out of the old, get into the cold.